the writer was having trouble finishing his book. Toronto was filled with distractions. Uh, there were friends to visit, plays to see, restaurants to try out. All sorts of reasons not to write. But he needed to finish his book. He was complaining about this to one of his friends who offered a solution. And the friend had a cabin out on a lake in the deep woods of northern Ontario. He would usually spend a good bit of each summer there, but work had him tied up in the, in the city in this particular summer. He wasn't going to be able to use it, and it would be good for the cabin to be used rather than sitting empty. That sounded like the perfect solution. So the arrangements were made, and on the when all was ready, the writer gathered his belongings and he took the train north from Toronto, north of the band of civilization and villages and farms, and into the, the deep woods of northern Ontario, into where the the forest spread for hundreds of miles. And finally, he came to the, the town pretty much the end of the line. And following the directions his friend had given him, got the keys to the cottage, gathered up supplies, bought them at the general store, and found the boat that his friend kept so that he could reach the, the, the islands. Or it was in the middle of a lake and the house upon this island. And so he set out. It was quite a, a pull, and but he found it. There was a small dock, a path leading up to the center of the island. Uh, the island was big enough that it had a nice forest. There was a place you could wander about in, but only a single dwelling, a house in the center, the end of that path. A small little house, a front porch, a front room, a kitchen in the in the back, a hallway connecting them, and from the hall, stairs going up to the second floor where there were two bedrooms. The writer claimed that the first, the one that looked out over the porch and down towards the lake, that for his bedroom, and the other he set up as a as a writing room. And he settled in, and there were no distractions. It was quiet there on the island. There was no one around. Supposedly, a couple of other cottages somewhere on the shore. Occasionally, his friend had said there'd be natives in the area, but rarely did they ever come by. And the writer set to work. And he got good progress. To the a night came when it had been hot, the weather oppressive all day. Warm heat and humidity up from the lake. And now you could tell there was a storm coming in. You could feel that heaviness in the air and soon you could see the clouds. And by evening, it come in and covered the sky so there was no moon or stars. Just the darkness of the night. The writer it was done for the day. He couldn't write. And with this heat and this oppressiveness in the air, he, he knew he wouldn't be able to sleep either. So instead, when he was done with his dinner, he, he left the lamp going. There was no electricity. Well, in those days, even in the cities, not everything was electrified. And definitely not out here on this island. It was oil lamp burning in the, the kitchen, give him light to prepare and eat his meal. And when he cleaned up, he just left it going and it cast a shaft of light down that hallway, and out the front door, out the porch, and on out down the, the walkway, the little path that led out to the, the dock and the lake. And the writer went and he sat out on the porch Trying to enjoy the night, but it wasn't a night to enjoy. 
bit oppressive, dark, uneasy, the storm slowly coming in, but but slowly, not even a, a breeze to stir the air. Distant rumbles of thunder, and that was all. And as the writer sat there, just staring out into the darkness, the lake and the waters, at the very end of that shaft of light where it faded off into the dark, far out over the waters, suddenly he saw something come flashing by. Just cut through. The, the shaft of light was narrow. It was just an instant to see something cross that shaft and then disappear into the dark. You get the impression of a, of a boat? Wasn't sure. He sat, still watching, wondering, and then he saw it again. Come by, another, another, it was definitely a boat, a canoe, a single paddler within it. Come from the darkness, cut across that shaft of light and disappear into the dark, closer though than the first one had done. And now, the writer, he sat forward in his chair, watching, wondering. And as he watched, after a few minutes, again, something passed by. Another canoe. Another paddler. Closer in to the island. It looked, and it looked like the first one, so. So he continued to watch, and sure enough, soon he saw it again come passing by, closer in, and now close enough that he could see it definitely was the same canoe. The same man in there, a, a, a native man, traditional dress, paddling silently, and apparently circling the island, round and around, for a few seconds and every passage, cutting through that shaft of light but not just circling, spiraling, coming closer and closer. On the next pass, it was definitely closer, almost to the dock, in fact. Indeed, on its next pass, that canoe might well meet with the dock. And the paddler, that man, come up the island. The writer grew nervous and suddenly wondered why he had a, a lamp going like a lighthouse into the night announcing his presence. He got up. He went around uh, into the, the kitchen and he turned down the lamp, turned it out, and darkness filled the house. But in many ways, of course, it was too late. The man in the canoe knew he was there. And of course, the writer thinking about the fact that he was miles and miles from the nearest town. And that town ends dozens of miles from the next. He was alone here in this little house on this island in this lake. He heard the scrape like a canoe scraping against the dock in the dark. Footsteps coming up that path from the shore. The writer wasn't sure what to do. He, he didn't want to be alone here in the house. But the only way out was through the porch. And he'd started that way before he heard the footsteps coming up. And he knew he did not want to meet that man. And then he quickly stepped back. He, he'd reached the front room of the house there. There was a big archway opening into that, and he stepped back into that arch so he'd be out of the hallway. And of course, it was dark in the house. And so stepping back into the dark, pressing back and not daring to move, not even breathing, as he heard footsteps come up onto the porch and then into that hallway. And a figure passed by. He could just sense it, not even really see it, a shadow in the dark, 
pass by him and back to the stairs. And then he heard the footsteps going up those stairs, one by one, creaking up to the second floor. And then steps above him in the ceiling, passing down the hall up there, passing by the back room and around to the front room, the bedroom. The room where the writer himself would normally be sleeping at this point. But because of the coming storm, and it was not. And the footsteps passed into the room. And finally, they stopped right over the writer's head, right beside the bed, which is at the base of the windows. Silence for a moment. And then the sudden sounds of a struggle, of strong blows raining down upon that bed, a, a, a moan, a cry. And silence. And then the sound of something heavy like being pulled from the bed and dropping heavy onto the floor. And then the footsteps coming back out of the bedroom and down the hall. And the sound of something being dragged behind. And the steps now descending the stairs, one by one, and something thumping on the stairs being dragged behind and back into the hallway. And the writer, still frozen with fear, did not move, not even a step further back. Didn't dare even look up for fear of what he might see, staring down now, down to the floor and hearing and sensing that presence pass by. We're going towards the door, but something heavy dragging behind it. And coming now, even now, even to the writer. And at just at that moment, the storm finally broke. There was a flash of lightning. Everything was lit up for an instant. And the writer found himself staring straight down into his own face. And then the darkness closed back in. There was a crack, a clash of thunder right over the house. Writer must have fainted dead away. He came to some time later, lying there upon the floorboards. Crack of lightning and the head and single to start of the storm, the air still oppressive and heavy in the dark, still about. But the house, the house all silent. He could tell it was empty. He made his way back around to the kitchen and, and fumbled for the matches and finally lit the lamp. He came back around. There was nothing on the floor. He went upstairs. Nothing upstairs. The bed did not seem to even have been disturbed from when he had made it in the morning. And wondering what on earth he had seen, the writer came back down. He set the lamp back down on the kitchen table. He stepped back out onto the porch to look out the dark of the night, hear the wind rising just a bit. And once again, of course, there was that shaft of light cutting through the dark, down to the dark and out over the lake. And as the writer looked out down that shaft of light, down at the far end, he saw something Come pass, passing through, go flashing by. And he could see a canoe, a single paddler, circling the island once again. A haunted island, adapted from the story by Algernon Blackwood. Blackwood.